Welcome to the Unrest Podcast. I'm Madeline Green. And I'm Caitlin Stancil. Make sure you subscribe to the Unrest Podcast so you can hear more real life haunts, people sharing their own spooky stories. And speaking of real life haunt, today's story is from Lindsay, and it's all about living in multiple haunted houses throughout the years. And a pretty significant experience that really opened her eyes to the idea that not everyone is open to paranormal experiences. Well, I'm of the opinion that I think the ability to see things or to be like open to supernatural things, sometimes I think there must be like a genetic component because Mm -hmm. in my family, we have tons and tons of stories and tons of experiences. And then, you know, like in my husband's family, nothing. Right, <laughs> so right. I had a, I have a really cool story about that. It's not about my husband, but it was, um, so back in the day when I had cable before I cut the cord, and before <laughs> I was married, I was dating some guy. It did not work out, but that's a story for a different time. Um, I had recorded one of those like ghost TV shows, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I, on my DVR. And so I was sitting with him, and we were watching this TV show, and it was actually about a cemetery here in Kansas that's supposed to be, like, one of the most haunted places in America. I'll be honest with you, I don't remember the name of the cemetery, nor have I made an effort to go um, hang out there, because I figure if what happened on the TV is any indication, I do not need to go hang out in the cemetery. So they did, like, a night shoot, and so they were just showing, like, um, scenes amongst the graves and whatever as they're talking about it and like telling their creepy story with creepy music and out of nowhere I see a woman in like 19th century clothes just walk across the screen and disappear <laughs> on the TV and I'm like wait what and so I stopped it because it was on DVR and I rolled it back and I click the button again and, I, and the same thing happened the, the woman just appears in the, around the graves and she walks for a few s- steps and she's gone so it was clearly a ghost and i thought to myself i'm like oh my god they captured a ghost on video and then i thought to myself why isn't anybody saying anything i rolled it back again and i said to the guy i was with and i'm like did you see that and all this whole time he's looking at me like i'm crazy which was not unusual which is why we don't date <laughs> <laughs> and he's like what are you talking about and I said, do you not see this lady? Like, there's a lady walking across the screen in this graveyard. And he's like, I have no idea what you mean. So I rolled it back and to where it started. And I clicked again, and I literally put my finger on the screen and, like, followed her with my finger, you know what I mean, until she disappeared. And I said to the guy, I'm like, do you not see that? And he's like, no, there's nothing underneath your finger. I was like, okay. I'm like, you just can't see it at all like you literally cannot see like I'm, I'm point blank pointing at it and he's like no there's nothing there and it was a really interesting moment because I'd always observed how you know how there are always people have lots of stories there's people who have nothing and I'm like maybe some people just literally cannot see it no matter what evidence you give them yeah so that was one of my stories was that kind of like your first experience with that that was I would say my first time ever seeing something on like a a tv show like that I saw something show up on screen that was like and it was so shocking to me because it was as plain as day from Mm -hmm. my perspective I mean I like those those creepy shows sometimes that was the first time I'd ever actually seen something and I remember thinking it was so weird that they weren't capitalizing on it and commenting on it I wish I remember what show it was but I do remember it was they were filming at a cemetery in Kansas there's supposed to be some really haunted cemetery in Kansas and that's where they were, but I don't remember the name of it. But in terms of, like, seeing stuff, I, like, my whole life, um, I think things really started to, like, settle down in, I would say, my mid-20s. And I haven't really had too many things happen since then. Um, I'm in my 40s now. But when I was a kid, it was just, like, a normal part of my life. And, in fact, when I was... um born my parents lived in a haunted house i lived in a haunted house from birth until i was two and 
I don't, I personally, like, I don't remember anything, but I've heard lots and lots of stories. It was a Victorian home um, that had been, it wasn't like a family home, but uh, prior to my parents buying it, it had been like multiple generations of the same family had lived there. And my parents bought it after I, like the last people had died. And it was one of those houses that like back in the day would have been in like a really beautiful part of town, very like wealthy and lovely, big house, that sort of stuff, but had since fallen into disrepair and was considered a bad part of town. So like my parents got it cheap because nobody really wanted to live there. I've seen pictures of it. It was a beautiful house, um, like a great big Victorian house, big wraparound porch. Mm. And it had a carriage house in the backyard. So they used that as like a garage, but it was definitely like a nice, it would have been a, a beautiful home, like around the turn of the century. And so there were lots of issues in that house. And I grew up with all of these stories. And what's interesting is so like my mom would tell me stories. And then my dad, who didn't really believe in any of that sort of stuff, would very begrudgingly say to me, he's like, I, I don't know that the house was haunted. He's like, but it was like weird stuff happened at the house all the time. So my favorite story is the story about the carriage house. So the carriage house had, you know, it had like two, we used this like garage, but like you had two places where you could put like your animals and your carriage. And then there were stairs going up and then they had a door that you could lock and then there was a place to store stuff and at the very on the outer wall was like a big a big door that opened up my assumption was that like they would either throw hay down out of that big area but it was like a big door that you could open up at the very top so they were always concerned because the house was in the middle of the city that someone would try to get into the, the carriage house and hurt themselves, and they didn't want the liability. They would, you know, try to keep the door closed, but every time they close the door, they wake up the next morning, and that outer door would be hanging open. Like, mm-hmm. it would just be completely open to the elements. And they did this over and over again, and every single time they would close the door, the door would open up um, or be open by the next day. And so my dad, I guess, got really mad about this, just figured that like somebody was was trying to live up there or something right Mm -hmm. so he got a chain and he like yanked that outer door shut and he locked it and padlocked it he then took all the spare furniture in this room and piled it up in front of that big window and then he went to that other door the outer door like to the kind of room that by the the top of the stairs and then he closed that up and like locked it off and came downstairs and he's kind of like well let's see if anyone gets in there now right (laughs) um so they go to bed you know he was pretty proud of himself he's like well no one's getting up there now i don't have to worry about it well the next day they walk outside and it's open again and i guess he was just livid and so he goes running into that carriage house the door that had been locked was unlocked and hanging open he goes into the main room Every piece of furniture that he had moved in front of that door was moved back to its original location. And um, the padlock was just disengaged, and the chain was just very neatly coiled up on the floor with the padlock sitting on top of it. He was not very happy. And at that point, I mean, they had been trying for so long to keep that thing shut that he's just like, the hell with it, right? I can't do anything about it. And there were always instances in that house, my mom said, like, stuff would move if they ever had arguments and they argued a lot they got they got divorced in that house so they were they got divorced when i was about two but my mom said that there would be arguments if they would have an argument in the house like they would fly in their clothes thrown out of closet or um like stuff in the closet and she like my dad's clothes would get ripped Mm. um which of course he blamed her um, she's like, it wasn't me. And you know what? I believe her because she's pretty aggressive. Like, if she were going to do it, she would have told him. Right. She'd have been like, yeah, I did. <laughs> She'd be like, yeah, that was me. When people would come over and bring their animals, animals would, like, freak out in that house. I guess my great aunt had a, a couple of little puppies. And when she would visit, all of a sudden, the dogs would be playing and they would stop and they'd stare. And they would start, like, yipping and, like, run and hide. Right. And it, it was stuff like that all the time. Much like the puppies, I guess, I would be distracted by things. <laughs> like, I would be in my in my bassinet and, like, just jabbering at things that weren't there. Mm-hmm. 
Um, <laughs> my mom says, and I've looked for these. I probably have them somewhere. My mom has pictures with like orbs, and she said she could see orbs near me a lot when I was a kiddo. Like I would be playing, and you'd look over, and there would be things whirling around me. And what's interesting is, so like I grew up with these stories, and then my dad was like, "Yeah, something weird was going on," and. I had an opportunity to connect with a cousin who's quite a bit older than I am, right? And um, he and I were, because he's like 20 years older than I am, so he remembers, like he was a young adult when this stuff was happening. And I said to him, I'm like, hey, you know, my mom's always talking about that house she lived in with my dad. That's all I said. And my cousin says to me, he's like, oh, yeah, that creepy haunted house. I'm like, okay, tell me more. And so he actually corroborated a lot of what my mom said that he's like yeah stuff would go flying out of nowhere or break he's like animals would freak out and there's that deal with your guys's garage like they could never keep it locked up it would always be unlocked so like he corroborated all of it and then another friend of my mom's who i like recently connected with on social media my mom's now in a in a nursing home and so i had reached out her friend and i managed to connect and mm-hmm. And, uh, and I'm like, hey, did you ever know anything about that house? And she was like, oh, yeah, the haunted house you guys lived in. She apparently saw manifestations in that house. So she said she saw a little boy, that there was a little boy who would very frequently walk between a couple of rooms, and you could hear him playing in the hall. They were pretty, they were pretty certain there was a little boy. They think that there was a young woman and my mom thinks the young woman is the woman who always, like, went after my dad's stuff when they had an argument. <laughs> but, yeah, they lived there for, I think, four or five years. And, like, that's where, like, I was, I wasn't born there, but that's where I first spent the first couple of years of my life in a haunted house. My mom once, like, was curious and, like, did that thing that you do. We live in the Midwest. It is on the, someone will come knock on your door and be like, I grew up here. And the next thing you know, like, you're having cake in someone's kitchen and you're right. walking through the whole house, right? <laughs> <laughs> We're maybe a little too nice sometimes. I don't know. We do that here in the in the South, too. It's like a shared culture. So my mom actually, like, stopped in one day, like, years later, just to kind of, like, she's like, oh, I used to live here and whatever. And um, she was curious, and she kind of she tried to ask some questions without like upsetting anybody. She also didn't like want to cause anything to happen if nothing bad was happening, and um, the people had had no issues at all. I wonder if because you guys, you know, as a family, were so in tune to it, if it was just something that came out for you. That's what I think, because I like my grandparents had stories. My mom had had stories prior to even moving into that house. My aunt and uncle, like. So you have, like, this whole family of people who are just, like, constantly in that house with all of this this energy and ability to see stuff. And so I think that's probably what happened. So my parents divorced, and then um, the next house we lived in, I don't, I don't remember any issues. But we ended up living with my grandparents for a while, and my grandparents' house was haunted. So we lived in – so my grandparents had, like – they like they, they lived upstairs, and then the basement was kind of like an apartment. And so my mom and I lived in that apartment. And there were at least two ghosts in that house. There was a little boy, and there was an old man. And I remember the first time I saw the little boy, I was it was right after we moved in. So I would have been little. I would have been like in kindergarten, maybe. Yeah, like kindergarten or first grade, something like that. And. So we had, like, this great big room, and, like, my mom had her bed, and then we had, like, kind of a divider, and then I had my bed. One evening, when, like, late at night, it was, the moon was full, or it was, there was a lot of light in the room, and I woke up, and there was a little boy just, like, watching me. I can remember seeing him and being like, oh, who are you, <laughs> right? And I don't know if it's just I had seen enough weird stuff in my life, I didn't think about it, but, mm-hmm. yeah, I remember seeing him, and he was watching me. And then he just, like, disappeared. And I remember I could feel him around in the house, and every now and again I'd see him, but I wouldn't, like, I don't have, like, I didn't, like, play with him. You always hear stories about, like, little kids playing with their imaginary friends. It wasn't like that, but I would see him. But what I do remember is there was another entity who was an older man, like, a much older man, like, older than my grandpa, who was a total jerk. And I was kind of afraid of him. So we had this big open space that my mom and I shared as a room, and then there was, like, a, a a bathroom in one corner, and then on one side it had, like, 
a really substantial closet. So you had like two of those levered doors that you would open up. And then there was like one side of the closet. There was like one, two, three, like poles that you would hang your clothes on. And then like on the backs, you could actually kind of like squeeze your way through because and come out the other side through a utility closet because like the furnace was back there. And I would always feel immensely uncomfortable going into that closet because I never knew what was going to happen. So I would go into the closet and sometimes like he would just appear out of nowhere. His face would just be right next to me and just scare the living crap out of me. Or I would feel it grab my shoulder or grab my arm and it just messed with me all of the time. Now, was this an older house as well? So it wasn't an older house, which is the thing I thought was so interesting. My grandparents had that house built. So it was a completely new construction hmm. on f- what had been farmland. So this whole this whole like subdivision had belonged to one family for a really long time. And then they had recently sold it and converted it into a subdivision. So I don't know if like maybe these were people who during the course of the like farm's existence had died. Right. Maybe they were connected to the land more so. Mm -hmm. And it was just awful. Like my mom would, you know, my mom would have activities or whatever. And I'd be watching TV downstairs. My grandparents were upstairs and I would always just like, I would be waiting for something to happen or I could like hear it like rustling and it was interesting. I never realized I always call it it, but I always call the little boy he. My mom knew that my mom saw the boy multiple times. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if my, my grandma and grandpa did, but I think everyone kind of knew there was something going on in the house. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't, ter- it wasn't like, a, it wasn't terrible. It was just like this random stuff would happen. And um, my mom would sometimes feel uncomfortable, but she never saw the older man. But he like, he was a mess, but I remember <laughs> there was one thing that I still laugh about. So I am the youngest grandchild, and there's kind of a distance between me and the next most of the rest of the family. Um, but I had one cousin. I have one cousin who's kind of like kind of close in age to me, and we were like oil and water growing up as kids. Like we just did not get along, and um, and so it was Christmas, and she and I were like having a sleepover down in the basement and the Christmas tree was all up in this other corner and um she was asleep and I remember like I knew that the the, like old man like that older entity was around and like I said he was a jerk but for once he didn't come after me he grabbed my cousin and like popped out like he like showed its face to her Mm -hmm. and woke her up and she just starts screaming bloody murder it goes running upstairs to her parents which is understandable and i remember just saying to it i'm just like well that was hilarious right (laughs) but for once it's not me and you know it was just like this constant feeling of it being there but it kind of again it kind of settled down we ended up moving out of the house probably like four or five years Mm -hmm. after that And then the last interaction I really remember with either of them was my grandfather passed away in the house. He actually passed away in the basement. And I remember like there was all of this, all this like craziness, right? Like the hospital and and this, that, and the other. And I remember feeling very nervous that like, what if my grandpa was stuck in that house? Oh, I'm like getting emotional. So I remember I was I was really young, like I was probably 12 or 13, and I waited, you know, for a moment to come downstairs just to kind of feel the situation out, to feel like if I felt there were any, there was any difference, and I, I definitely didn't feel him there, but weirdly enough. I kind of got this sense that, like, this, this, like, jerk of an old man, like, like, I just got a different feeling from him. Like, he was sorry. 
But I just remember going down there, and I was really concerned. I'm like, there better not be three things in that basement. Like, I don't want my grandpa to be here. Mm -hmm. And it was still just the two. And um, I got this sense that, like, they both knew kind of what had happened. And I just got, like, it felt, like, somewhat comforting, which was a different experience given what I had had happened over the course of the years there. And I think, honestly, it was one of the the very last times like I ever interacted with those two because my you know the family sold the house and you know they moved but it was kind of an interesting experience because I kind of grew up with those two in high school there was a lot of activity I was really fortunate in that our house that we moved into was not haunted like there was nothing in that house um because I was always so used to like feeling something around and to have a house just feel neutral was unusual a friend of mine's house was haunted so like if i went over there i could feel something there was something really really negative and dark in his house and because we were teenagers and stupid we liked to kind of poke it and like things would get broken or there was just a lot of negativity in that house it was an extremely violent household too and i don't know like what was feeding what there was like this one corner of the house and multiple of us in high school like our little friend group saw it like it was just huge and black like it was just like this looming like dark figure and his you know his parents were in a really bad relationship and then his mom was working all the time so like that was the house we would go to because there were no parents and it's stupid and like his little sister would have nightmares all the time and be afraid and then there was this corner that it primarily like it was actually his parents room or his mom's room that it would manifest in and you could like it was like it felt almost oily like angry and so again young and stupid we all like to like we would take turns you know like people do seven minutes in heaven like to go go poke the scary angry ghost for seven minutes like we go in the room in the dark and just see how scared we could get like in retrospect, I'm like, maybe that wasn't the the right choice. <laughs> and it would kind of, it would come out and you could actually like in the darkness, you could see it was really tall and it was really big and you could see like the shape of it and you can see where the night got darker where it was standing. And um and then you get scared and you'd run out. And I don't like go looking for this because I'm like, chances are my girls are going to be sensitive. And I'm like, I don't want to accidentally bring anything home. So I try to be really careful. But we were at some friend's house, a friend's house, and they had been having problems. Like stuff would go, car keys would go missing and plates would go missing. And they'd hear, like late at night, they would hear like running upstairs and they'd go check. They have three kids. The kids mm-hmm. would be asleep, but they would hear running back and forth upstairs There was a lot of, like, mischief taking place in that house. And we had gone for a visit, and we're staying in, like, a great, like, a a bonus room Mm -hmm. that the kids would normally play in, but they put in, like, mattresses and stuff for us. Every now and then I could feel something, and my friend had been telling me these stories. And I'm like, yeah, I think there's something going on here. But I hadn't had any problems. Well, Mike, we were getting ready to go, and... My kids are out playing, and I was, like, getting everything prepped to pack up and put, you know, you kind of, like, set everything up. Do I have everything? Let me kind of get organized. While I was doing this, I was by myself in this bonus room, and I 100% could feel something watching me. Like, I knew something was there. I had to step out of the room for some reason, and I had to step out of the room for some reason to do something. I came back, like, 10, 15 minutes later, and a whole bunch of stuff was gone that I laid out. Everyone else was outside. So it's like I stepped out, outside to, like, help with the kids. There was nobody in the house. I came back to the bonus room. The stuff I had set aside to pack, parts of it were missing. And I could feel it, like, on the periphery. And like I said, this is – they had been having issues with remotes missing and keys missing and all this other stuff. And I'm like, okay. I knew it was there, <laughs> and I got really mad. And I'm like, listen, I know you're here. I can feel you. I know you took my stuff. And I'm like, I know that friend's name hasn't known what to do with you. And I'm like, but you and I are going to have another problem. And I will take care of this. Or you're going to give me your stuff back. Because, like, if you don't give me my stuff back, we are going to have problems, friend. And I want my stuff. 
and you're gonna stop doing this bullshit do you understand me and I'm like I'm leaving I'll be back in 10 minutes I expect it back I left I came back and all the stuff was back um I think I essentially parented a ghost in that instance <laughs> but I was like nope and oh it's, it's fun to talk about it and to talk about it hopefully uh, you know people who don't think I'm totally crazy I think I was just so used to it as a kid for the most part like I had all these experiences they never really phased me because like it was just such a part of my life growing up and then it is sometimes I'll be honest sometimes I feel a little sad that I don't hear or see more things mm-hmm. but I also recognize I'm like like the door is I think the door is closed but it isn't locked and I have to ask myself, is this something that I really want to have to deal with? Because there were things that were scary and there were things that were not positive. And do I want to open that door again and expose my family um, to these problems? And I think as I've, as I've gotten older, I have come to appreciate quiet a lot more than I ever did when I was a teenager. Thank you, Lindsay, for sharing all of your amazing stories with us. There were so many of them. And I love that. I love that she was so open to share them with us. You have a story, please email us at the unrest podcast at gmail.com. Or guess what? You can interact with us on Facebook on our page, the unrest podcast, join us in our Facebook group for some special content, or we're on TikTok. Check us out there. And until next time, unrest, unrest in peace. peace.